OK, good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is an educational institution, so good morning. All right, hi. I'm Gary Nell, the um, chairman of National Geographic Partners, and here with Brett Jenks, who's the head of RARE. I wanted to, my job is really to welcome you all to National Geographic uh, and remind everybody here that we're actually 131 years old. And this is about a, a tribe of people who are curious, caring, it's a collective. Um, and the whole purpose of this enterprise is really to care about and for the planet. You know, Alexander Graham Bell, who was our second president here, a serial inventor, talked about National Geographic being about the world and all that's in it. And they really envisioned a collective of people who understood uh, what was happening and wanted to learn about all of the beauty and, and actually the, the risks that are, are associated with the, the planet's health. Today, National Geographic, of course, is, um, is an enterprise that has a nonprofit mission around trying to protect 30% of the planet by 2030, an ambitious goal to reduce the human footprint and to educate a new generation of kids in this country and around the world around geographic competency. And at the same time, we tell stories. And this is not, as I like to say, your grandfather's National Geographic. We have 102 million Instagram followers. We, we, we just are this close to Justin Bieber, OK? <laughs> and we passed Nicki Minaj last week. So you got So that's a statement. We won an Oscar two weeks ago, Bravo. free solo. <laughs> and just on Thursday, we won the National Magazine Award for uh, the best a magazine against pretty stiff competition. So with this focus of a, of a philanthropic mission, as well as this arsenal of content, we're dedicated now more than ever towards um, you know, illustrating the most effective ways to combat climate change. We're, we're reading the paper every day. National Geographic has done a long view of these issues. We have focused for years in ringing the alarm bells in the past. We had a, we actually, one of these magazines out here in the lobby from almost 20 years ago talks about global warning. We framed the war on science a couple of years ago. And we chronicled, of course, these massive impacts on the glaciers, on animals, on people. Uh, and tonight, for instance, this very stage, we'll have uh, our film from Paris to Pittsburgh which we did with Bloomberg Philanthropies, which chronicles what's actually being done in many private sector and cities around the world around climate since the Paris Accords. So yes, still with all of this work, as you know, big portions of the public remain skeptical and have a sense of denial. They question an authority that has not helped them. They haven't drunk the Kool-Aid that so many others have because the Kool-Aid for a system of experts has really not assisted them in pursuing their life dreams. So others throw their hands up. They, they say, what can I do? It's going to put pressure on the so-called American dream that I was brought up on. So today's newspaper, or every day, there's some calamity. Millions of kids went on strike last Friday to protest climate change. We see Nebraska and Missouri underwater like they've never been before. Denver has a bomb cyclone last week, as they call it. And I was supposed to go there to give a speech on water, and I couldn't literally get there. And they canceled the conference probably because they heard I was going to speak there. <laughs> and Mozambique had one of the worst cyclones in history, where thousands of people are feared dead. So we know these issues are happening. We know these events are happening. When Brett contacted me last year to, about this event that he and his colleagues were planning, I immediately said, of course we should do this. How do we tackle these immovable objects of denial or frustration? So today, this is really, I hope, we will have an amazing array of ideas. 
We will listen, absorb, discuss, debate, populate those ideas. National Geographic stands ready to work with RARE and everyone else in this room to promote the best ideas, to be able to put those in front and tackle those, tear down those hurdles that are in front of us. We need to inspire the believers more and nudge those who are on the fence that it's worth their time. Or we're gonna promote, find way, we have a choice of promoting a planet in balance, or are we really going to settle, and I'm serious about this, a Mad Max future of a world of survival and a battle for resources? We're gonna have 10 billion people on this planet by the year 2050, and how are we possibly going to provide energy for them, house them, educate them, and provide food for them without burning up everything in or on the planet. I told Brett back there, I just got back from India, where seven of the 10 most polluted cities in the world exist today. The good news is that environment is in the top three issues on everyone's mind in India, behind politics and Bollywood. <laughs> but more than sports, environment is a critical issue to 800 million people under the age of 35 in India. It is time. That's why we're here today. That's why we come to work each day at National Geographic. We're in this together, we can do this, so let's use this day to the fullest. Thank you, Gary. You're welcome.